Good morning, everyone. We appreciate you guys joining us this morning. As we are in the middle of summer. I know we can feel it here in California, that's for sure. But um, yeah, so thank you for joining. I have David here as well. And uh, if there's more drivers that join, we'll add them on as they come on. We've got a good amount of people on already. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. We have some aggressive driver conversations and weather conversation and um, just some other reminders about, you know, summertime and vehicle maintenance and stuff like that. So like as always, if you have anything you want to, any questions you may have, um, participation, feel free to unmute yourself and um, bring, up, bring up those points or questions and we'll gladly be able to answer those for you. Uh, if nothing else, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, thank you guys for joining again. David. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I want to talk about the weather. As you know, we're dealing with this uh, climate change and uh, unusually hot weather uh, because of because of it. And what can happen, especially in summertime, when you have drivers who have not been driving for a long time, but they're going on vacation. Away. Um, as the temperature rises, so does so do their 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 tempers. They have short temper, short temper. They get aggravated easily, and a driver can become aggressive uh, really quickly because of it, uh, and that can cause accidents. And it, but but the big thing is that aggression can also turn into road rage. Um, Aggressive is when like they're following you too close, or they're eyeing you, or they're they pull in front of you and cut you off, or uh, don't pay any attention to what you're doing or whatever. They don't care that you're trapped there. They're just gonna change lanes whenever they feel like it, and not they don't really care what's going on. They don't use their signals. They're this unsafe behavior can be aggressive. Road rage. It's when they are actually coming for you. Uh, they brake check you, uh, try to run you off the side of the road or force you off the road. That's aggression. And what you need to be able to do, even though it's hot out there, is for you to be cool. Keep your anger in check. Keep your upsetness in check. Uh, what they do should have nothing to do with how you respond. And uh, just so you know, if you react in with your truck to anything that they do, that can be considered uh, felony assault, okay? Because you're using your truck for something that you are wasn't intended to. You can't you can't brake check them. You can't uh, swerve uh, swerve them off the road. Do all of those things. They can be you can wind up in jail or in prison for that, okay? So make sure that your response is cool and that you uh, pay attention to what, pay attention to what's going on. Okay, you know, I don't want to see any of you guys in jail. Okay. Also, because of the weather, we are winding up with uh, a lot of storms. Okay. Storms can, can bring a lot of different things, especially in the summertime, heavy, heavy rains. Uh, Illinois uh, area around Chicago uh, had a series of six tornadoes, which is hardly ever seen in Illinois. Uh, not in Illinois, southern Illinois, yes, but not around the Chicago area. But they had six tornadoes so far this year. So, especially in the rain, okay, one of the things you have to be careful of is rain. How fast are you going? Uh, what's your stopping distance? All of those things. I'll give you an example. There was a couple of years ago a serious accident in Pennsylvania where um, a driver was on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And because the rain was very, very heavy, he was doing probably about 45 miles an hour. So he got passed by a bus that was doing 70. Uh, later on down the road, the bus actually flipped over on its on its side and presented the driver with the bottom of the bottom of the bus facing the driver. Uh, the driver, because he was going so slow, barely touched the bus. But he got rear-ended by 
two other trucks that were doing 70 miles an hour. The lesson of that is, and, and while well, let me the driver of that truck was cleared by the NTSB as having done his job safely. Okay, the driver of the truck that hit the back of the other truck, that driver died. Actually, I think two of the drivers of those trucks died running into the back of the truck that was stopped. Now they would have, if they if that truck hadn't been there, hit the bus, which was on its side. Now I think four people on that bus died already. But imagine a bus across all the lanes at night, 4 a.m. in the morning, running into the back of this, the black bottom of the bus at 70 miles an hour. Think of how tragic that could have been. So doing 45 in that rain made a big difference in terms of the number of lives saved. Okay? So you think that it's okay to ride that way in the in the rain, it's not. You never know what can happen. I don't think that I don't think that driver expected to see a bus turned over on its side all the way across the road. I think that's 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 something that's not common at all. Okay. So those are the kinds of things you need to be looking out for in especially in rain, rainy and or tornado areas. Try to slow down. No big deal. I got asked a, a question about uh, who is more prone for accidents. Now, just so you get my background, I was the vice chairman and the chairman of the ATA uh, Accident Review Committee. And one of the things that we found is that there are three drivers that are accident prone. One is the new driver. Because a new driver doesn't really know a lot of things. He doesn't have a lot of experience. But another one is the driver who's been driving for five years. And we don't know exactly the philosophy or what's going on in their head. But I'm, I'm guessing that at five years, because I tell drivers, you, you don't become a truck driver until you've been driving for five years. Okay? That's when you really know it. But I think what happens is that the driver thinks, hey, I've been driving five years. I know this. I got this down pat. They have, they are accident prone too. Okay. The next level is drivers who've been driving for 15 years. Now you would think that a 15, 15, driver 15 years experience would be okay with uh, being able to drive and handle the truck. But what can happen is they become complacent. They've done this so many times and so long, you don't even think about it. It's like, like breathing. You don't think about breathing, you just breathe. So what happens in 15 years is it, it's everything is just automatic. I'm not paying attention to it. Just automatic. So those are the three drivers who have problems with accident, they're accident prone. The new driver, the five-year driver, and the 15-year driver. Okay. Um, and additionally, speaking of hot weather, tires, you've got to check to make sure your tires, first of all, are in good shape. But secondly, that your tires are inflated correctly. Hot weather can, can make the pressure in your tire almost double. Okay. So you've got to be really careful with that. Um, Make sure that you don't want to, you don't want to have a blowout. A blowout is, is can be can be dangerous for a couple of reasons. One is that you the pieces of a blowout when a tire blows travel about a hundred miles an hour. So you can imagine that a tire that blows up and the pieces hit hit you for hit, hit a car next door or leave a piece behind at a hundred miles an hour. It can be devastating. It can be causing another accident. It can be causing a fatality. And even trans. Why? Hold on a second here. Okay. So you need to be make sure your tires are in good shape and that the pressure is correct. And you need to check them on the road. Every time you do a stop and you have to do your daily visual inspection, check your tires. 
you know, carry carry around your uh, pressure gauge and just go through and check them a little bit. Make sure that they're not too overblown. Okay. The other reason that um, blown tire blowouts are dangerous is because, uh, well, let me go back. Uh, what do you think your response would be if your steer tire blew? I'm going to give you a second or so two to think about that. You're driving along at 65 miles an hour and your steer tire blows, either left or right. What's going to happen to the truck and what would you do? Okay, now most people that I ask this question, the first thing they say is I put the, I'd apply the brakes and pull over if they can pull over. But that, that's, that, that's what you think, but it's exactly the opposite. Um, and I'm going to get a little scientific here, but Newton's, Newton's third law of physics is that an object going in a straight line will continue to go in a straight line unless it's acted upon by an outside force. Well, if, you're, if your truck tilts to the left and to the right, that's going to change your steering. Your right tire does not does not steer anymore. It's only the left tire, and it's smaller. So your tire, your truck is going to drift into that. How do you correct for that? You shouldn't brake. How do you correct for it? Believe it or not, is you accelerate. You want to keep the force. You want the force going forward to be stronger than the force pulling you to the side. Okay. Then what happens is you gain you gain control of the truck, and then you, as you slow down, your speed slows down. Then you can pull over and uh, on the side. Okay. Now I've had a lot of people say telling me that oh that's crazy that's not how that works. Now there are lots of videos out there that will tell you exactly that. If you get a blowout, accelerate. Do not decelerate because you want to counteract the force that's pulling you to either side with the force that's making you go forward, okay? Then later on, you can slow down and uh, pull over to the side of the road. Now, um, does anybody have any questions about any of this? David, you said to accelerate first, like to gain more speed first, and then remove your foot from the pedal. Is that what you said? Yes, you accelerate first to, to continue the force to, to make you go on a straight line. Then as you as you will gradually slow down, you will gain control of the truck. But when the blowout happens, the first the first pressure is away either to the left or to the right. And that causes that causes a lot of accidents. So you want to accelerate to keep the truck going in a straight line, then gradually slow down and gain control because it doesn't take much, it takes less than a second for the truck to start going left or right after a blowout. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Is anybody else confused about that? Okay, like I said, there's there are, and I don't I don't exactly know where they are, but there are videos, uh, safety videos about this information. So if you don't believe me, you can look that up. Uh, I want to do a couple of reminders really quick here. Uh, do not pull the trailer from the door, especially swing door trailers. If the load fell, is the driver irresponsible? Yes. Let switches pull the trailer from the door. Okay, never park trailer into a, into a spot. You need to pull into the drop trailers, drop your designated uh, trailer areas, and let the switchers take it from there. Okay? Do not back into the dock yourself. Okay, is there anything else? Okay, have a safe trip, and remember uh, you not only have your own life, but other people's lives in, in your hands. You need to be aware, alert, and paying attention all the time. Okay, have a safe one, guys.
Zinia, do you guys have any updates for the for the team or? Um... No, we have a video for the tires. I don't know if you have it, if you receive it. it was a second email. Okay, let me see. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I see it now. You see it? The other thing is like, it's a, uh, while well, you find that, uh, that we need to apply to what we're learning now for the people who are on vacations, we need to be vigilant out there and yield at all time. Also, it's going to be back to school pretty soon and it gets hectic. People don't want to stop for some reason when the school bus as a sign that we need to stop, suddenly everybody accelerates. So we really need to be very vigilant out there. People are running late, out of routine. So. Very true. Okay, I'm gonna start this uh, video about the tires and how the heat can affect those tires. Hello, I'm Mike Steiner, the Tire Whisperer, and today we're going to talk about heat from the wheel end and preventing a thermal event on your truck. So buckle up, get ready, it's time for the two-minute warning. Okay, so the thing I want you to understand about wheel end heat is that it directly affects the tire, and there are two temperatures I'm going to focus on today, 250 degrees and 550 degrees. So let's see what 250 degrees does to your tires. Okay, so the wheel end heat's basically coming from three sources. We've got the brakes, which is the most common source. What video is buffering here? Common source, we've got... Bearings. Yeah. And then, of yes. course, you have a tire if you're doing frequent. I was going to say, why does it generate heat? Now, okay, never mind. Go ahead, David. It's um, it's like downloading or something. I'll pause okay, it well, to try to let it catch up. I um, I I received the uh, the text. I guess it was sent about um, questions that arose from the last from the last. Uh, meeting that we had okay uh -huh. about um, uh, violations and aggression towards truck drivers okay uh, I don't know what the questions are but you need to be vigilant with those um, last uh, two weeks ago I had one of my drivers car pulled in front of him on a lonely stretch of road where there was nobody in Texas and flashed his lights and was actually telling the driver, pull over, pull over. Now, the driver couldn't see any reason to be pulling over. There was nothing wrong with his truck, nothing wrong with the car. So what he did was he called 911, told the state police what was happening, that this guy, where was in that car, kept signaling him to pull over, okay? The state police told him to go to a particular truck stop. He went to that particular truck stop. And uh, I guess the, uh, there's a, service, a security guard there or whatever and watched to see what car was following him. The car then, when he pulled in, saw the security guard and, and left, pulled away. Now, we think that it was an attempted hijacking, but we're not sure. But the thing is, the driver recognized that he was in the middle of nowhere and this car was trying to get him to pull over, okay? So that's one of the things that uh, um, that you need to be careful of. Just pay attention. Wow, that's an interesting one. Definitely could have been worse if you would have actually pulled over. Yep, could have been a lot worse. You know, and I've said this before, you know, when you leave the house, you're promising that you're going to be, that you're going to come home to your family, okay? 
Does that mean you need to stay alert all the time? Little things can pop up that really aren't, uh, they don't seem like a lot, but just little hairs on the back of your neck. So if you're standing up, see, uh, you need to be careful of it. And pay attention. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna try this video again. Uh, looks like it had some time to kind of download, so we'll see how it goes here. If that heat builds up and stays between, say, 250 and 350 degrees, the rubber starts to transition. You get a hardening of the rubber. Xenia, I'll put this video inside the training session on the, on the app. And they'll see if it'll play better if someone wants to watch it um, after. This thing's going to keep buffering. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, so for the update, I have for last meeting that we had in Orlando, they just want to continue to clarify the use of seatbelt. They are saying seatbelt is meant to be used properly and it was intended. Meaning cannot be too loose, cannot be under your arm cannot be that the bottom part it's clipped and you're just using the top part, okay? And they are also, now they mentioned in one of those meetings that now North Carolina, in that area from North Carolina, they're using some kind of artificial intelligence where can it identify drivers that are not wearing the seatbelt properly? And also they are targeting a lot, the speed. Okay, so be aware of that. They send either a law enforcement is what they are saying, or they can get you at the next uh, wait station. Somehow that thing identify you and even take pictures of you. That's uh, the new thing right now out there. So be vigilant on that. The other thing is that remember to have your medical card with you, the paper one, even though it should be in the system, we know that law enforcement has this in the past, if they stop you and their system is not working for some reason and you don't have the medical card with you, then it's on you. So we continue to say have the medical card, the paper one with you at all times to avoid any issue. And off PC, they are saying off PC is a huge issue right now. And basically long story short, do not use it. The only reason you should be using off PC, and we have said that before, it's if you're gonna drink coffee, if you do not have a load assigned, if you're over the road, you're gonna drink coffee or you're gonna eat lunch. Do not ever use off PC because you're in the yard or you're coupling. That's not off PC. And basically they are saying avoid using it. Okay, then they are giving a lot of emphasis to the hole they did in the in line holes for you to see if the tractor is ready or not. Okay, for to determine if you are you can pull or not the trailer. Our policy is never pull the trailer, but if it's in the door, you need to follow all those steps. And I, I sent Aaron also a new checklist they sent from Georgia, from Mariana, Georgia. Look at it. Do not take any risks. Call us. Take pictures. Take screen pictures saying that your trailer is closed. Go and look in that hole. Make sure the rolling door is down, that the trailer has a seal on, okay? And then call us or call the office as well. Basically, what they're saying in Ocala is that you have to yield. We know that it's back to school, it's summertime, people are going to get into your lane, they are going to cut you. Citizens don't know better. They don't know what your blind spots are. So you need to be vigilant, as David says, 
and you need to yield at all time. Then for the updates, please say happy birthday to everybody whose birthday was in July. Then the housekeeping reminders is like to be respectful when we communicate in line hall. If you have any issue or something, please let us know. Do not engage, okay? Avoid a stopping in emergency shoulders. That is just for extreme emergencies, not for if you need to take a break or if you're tired. If you're tired, need a break, go to a rest area or rest in the terminal, but do not use the shoulder for that. And when you participate from this meeting, we are inviting everybody to find a safe place, everybody who's driving, of course, find a safe place to avoid distractions. Do not use the shoulder to participate from this uh, training. And just thank you for maintaining all the equipment clean. And thank you for all you do. Oh, the other thing is the employee handbook. We're gonna start reviewing that as well from next meeting on, okay? And thank you again for your time. All right. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you for joining. Continue to have a safe um, week, and we'll talk again next month. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. I like it.